What's up everybody, I'm Kangas, and in this video we're covering some recent statements about Riot's philosophy on visual clarity. So if you've ever felt like a certain skin is just unfair, or have feelings about potential pay to win skin buffs, we're covering all that here. So hit that sub button, and let's get right into it. Alright, so first off, let's mention what Riot says are their three most important goals in terms of visuals. Number one is clear gameplay. The whole point of creating visual effects or any art for an ability is to make it clear what's going on. Players should be able to identify and react to specific spells and champion attacks. Next is to preserve hierarchy. What Riot means by this is to make it clear what is most important in a fight. An ultimate ability, for example, is supposed to be flashy because they want players to notice it. In a specific champion kit, the visual effect of their ultimate should naturally be more prominent and clearer than the rest of it. The moment you notice that ability pop, it should be clear to the viewer that it's something important. And the last point is to keep noise to a minimum. Audio as well as visual distractions can add up. Too many effects can make team fights really hard to track, and at the end of the day, what's most important is knowing what's going on in terms of gameplay. And quick before we cover the rest of the statement, here's our question of the day. Nice and simple, what's your favorite skin in the game and why? Even though I never play this champion, mine has to be Draven Draven just because I think it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. But let me know yours in the comments below. Alright, moving forward. When clearly defining a champion, there are also two important factors. Silhouettes and abilities. If you could only see a champion's shadow, you still want to be able to distinguish who it is. Clear characteristics like Sana's giant ass gun are dead giveaways and you don't even need the rest of the picture to identify that champ. The look of a champion is extremely important, especially for newer players, how you perceive someone visually should give you an idea about how a champion plays. A bigger champion, for example Zac, would obviously be a tanky frontliner. A small fragile champion like Teemo is clearly meant to be played more evasively and carefully. Another important point in regards to clarity is knowing which direction a champion is facing based on their silhouette alone. Next up, let's talk about ability clarity. What's most important about even incorporating art into a game like League of Legends is the idea of hitboxes. You want them to not only be visible, but also pretty clear. That's what the art is there for. Players should be able to identify these hitboxes the moment that they see them. Riot is currently working on making sure that the visuals match the hitboxes, and they even have plans to update any older artwork that doesn't match their standards today. Another important point that they pay attention to is, once again, hierarchy. How important an ability is should reflect visually. If an ability does tons of damage, it should garner a lot of attention. The example Riot uses for this is Zoe's Q. It's bright and has a very distinct sound. I'm sure we've all had the pleasure of getting one shot by it and can always distinguish this ability amidst any chaos in a fight. Crowd control is similar. Hard CC or CC with long durations should be made clearly visible such as Tarek's stun. When an ability can be dodged, this should also grab the eye of a player. One more example is when the ability has a large impact of play. Think something like Tarek's ultimate and even Kale's ultimate, which are very clear to see. The moment you see them, you know that you need to change up your game plan. That said, when the skin is made, it's crucial that these points of clarity remain intact. The whole point of a silhouette is to retain that clarity because they define a champion. The challenge is making sure that you can add enough flavor to a skin without taking away from that clarity. In a worst case scenario, a skin would provide too many changes and you wouldn't even be able to identify the champion in question. When making skins for champions, there are primary, secondary, and even tertiary features. The primary feature should never be removed or significantly changed in a skin. Senna's gun, for example, makes it clear who she is even if there are changes to the model. Because her gun's just huge and catches the eye, it's obvious that that's Senna. But for this next one, we've all been there. Some skins have added some unintended effects, and Riot said that they're doing their best to address these. Skins purchased should still provide the same level of clarity as the base skin, but that's not always the case. Riot's goal is to make sure that the game isn't pay to win, and at the very least, they do make changes when enough players bring issues to their attention. One example of this is with Shanghai Scrolls Jin. Initially, the borders of the skin's ultimate were just really hard to notice. Obviously, this would give the Jin player a huge advantage, as players would have to take more time to determine where they needed to go. In response to this, Riot darkened these lines to make it sure that they'd be more visible. And a big feature of certain skins is that they actually transform. Moving forward, Riot wants to make sure that skins with transformations only display them during home guard animations or empowered states. Arya's Spirit Blossom skin is a great example of this because you can see her full fox form while she's home guarded and can see her human fox form when she ults. And the final point to mention is that cosmetic animations should never provide an advantage. Recalls, dances, taunts, and whatever else the skin may include create flashy effects that move a character's model. However, it's noted that hitboxes should never move, even if the model does during them. 
Pool Party Renekton appears to pop upwards when he recalls, but his hitbox remains in the same area. Riot has a rule now for future skins that a champion must stay in the recall circle for at least two seconds during the initial animation. Believe it or not, there's a lot of skins that have a history with their animations. One major example is Lancer Blitzcrank. When this skin was initially released on the PBE, players were really disappointed that it didn't have an alternative walking animation. Riot clarified that adding a new walking animation to a champion like Blitz might just mess up with the overall clarity of the champion. Blitz has a very distinct walking animation, and Riot did not want players to second-guess themselves. However, Riot did just release Space Groove Blitz, and he definitely has new animations. When asked about the difference between the two skins, Riot stated in a blog that ultimately, Space Groove Blitz is a legendary skin. This typically includes animation changes, unlike Lancer Blitz, which is only an epic. But this doesn't even answer the main question at hand. If Riot said that a floating animation for Blitz will hurt the champion's clarity, why change that for a legendary skin? Well, the answer is actually pretty important for future skins. Back in 2017, Riot didn't have as many clear-cut goals for their skins and clarity. Now in 2021, Riot knows their plan for clarity, and that's why we're even talking about their goals to begin with. Okay, so Riot went back on some of the stuff that they said back in 2017, but what about skins that are poorly received? In their blog post, Riot mentioned Storm Dragon Lee Sin and all the negative feedback about it. On paper, it looks really good, but it just doesn't look or feel like a Lee Sin skin. His skills were extremely flashy, and all the bright effects didn't match the base skin very well. So, what's the update on skins like these? What happens when the skin doesn't really hit the mark in terms of clarity? According to Riot, Storm Dragon Lee Sin's clarity is actually in a good spot. After all the changes to the skin on the PBE, it's in an acceptable place right now. However, Lee Sin and his skins are part of a much larger issue. Most players identify Lee Sin through his animations, which makes it really difficult to design a legendary skin. In the future, Riot wants to take a look at Lee Sin and change some of his skins so that they can establish a consistent and distinct silhouette for him. This sounds like a problem that a lot of older champions struggle with, so we'll get some changes, but they probably won't be anytime soon. With that said, there are some things that Riot has addressed. While some players have requested a toggle on or off option for skins, Riot responded honestly that they don't intend to for financial purposes. At the end of the day, they need some way to make money and the game is technically free to play. Being able to show off skins is one of the biggest reasons to purchase them, so instead, they're working to make sure that the skins are fair moving forward. Just apparently not Blizzcrank. In theory, this should work out as long as the skins don't end up providing unintended buffs to users. So I'm glad to know that they've at least made attempts to fix issues with the newer skins. Also, Chromas follow a similar set of standards. The champion should still maintain their definitive silhouette, but more importantly, the Chroma itself should stay thematically similar to the base skin. While staying in the same universe, it should look like a change of clothes. Finally, I'm sure a lot of us have had experiences where certain bits of audio are way too loud. Certain skins like PsyOps Pike have created way too much noise and it made the champion much more distracting than initially intended. Riot's response to this was that it's a continuous work in progress. As players provide more feedback, they'll make the necessary adjustments. So before we wrap up the video, why should you care about clarity in League of Legends? The fact that pro players can't use certain skins during competitive play should say a lot to the rest of the community. Champion animations are extremely important in League of Legends, and having a small advantage over your opponent can be the difference between winning and losing, even if it's not that obvious. You know how sometimes when you're using a red trinket you come across a crazy ward skin and it even looks like a champion? Imagine if that happened with an enemy champion skin. Clarity seriously matters and it's important for Riot to constantly improve the game. That's why we're seeing so many VFX updates, model updates, and bug fixes. Well, that'll cover everything that we learned so far about Riot's take on visual clarity. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Let us know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. And also check out the description to join our Discord because I'd love to see you all there. With that said though, wish you a great rest of your day and best of luck in your ranked games. I'll see you next time. What's going on everybody? I'm Kangas and in today's video, we're covering recent statements about Riot's, what? Oh, chair. There's a chair. <laughs> I was like, what, what are you pointing at? <laughs> Oh, <laughs>